everybody say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get a verse, please? I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. You made it. You made me hate. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. You made it. You made it behave. That's why I say.
Don't you know in the process you can find Jesus? Don't you know in your pain you can find Jesus? In that broken relationship, you can find Jesus. In the loss of a loved one, you can find Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for patience. Thank you for patience. I'm going to inherit the promises. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Can you know about Sunday? Body of Christ. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah.
Just say oh, just say oh. Now give God a thanksgiving. Come on, thank him. Give God a thanksgiving. God is worthy of the praise. God is worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the glory. It's our, it's our much celebrated ugly sweater day. Even though we waited till the last minute, it's hot out there. But the sweater's still ugly. <laughs> How many of you know it? We thank God for orchestrating something. Sometimes lessons are learned through obedience. What are you saying, Pastor Dave? I, man, it's 70 something degrees out there. But I say, you know what? I got to put that sweater on because it's not left up to me. It's, just, it's not even about the sweater as much as it is about the word that God's going to give us today. Today's service will not be like a normal attended service. You may be seated, as a matter of fact. You'd have got your praise on. You should have told God, thank you. But just in case you didn't, you need to say, Lord, I thank you. You know, a lot of times in church we say thank you, but who are you really thanking? Or are you just utilizing parrot faith? and saying thank you. I believe that acknowledgement goes to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we begin to go through periods and times and seasons like this. I love the time that we call Christmas and when I get into my word, which will be in about a couple of minutes, my title is A Christmas Story. A Christmas Story. And I pray to God that I'll be able to illuminate something to someone so that you'll be able to give your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren a proper perspective for Christmas. I'm not here to debunk Santa Claus. I'm not here to write you on how many gifts you buy, don't buy. I always employ wisdom and tell people do not become indebted because of a season. But that's not even my word today and I believe that that would take us out of the spiritual plane that we're on right now if I were to pause there. Because one thing I've found after 20 years of pastoring is that people don't like truth. But truth is not truth because I spoke it. Truth is the revelatory meaning of what the Holy Spirit gave to me. And he said, truth is the inner acceptance of God's word. See, truth bears witness with you. And truth makes you act out against somebody else but it was embedded in you. I tried to find a couple of Christmas carols that we possibly could congregationally blow through. And I was laughing at myself because, you know, it's been many years, somebody said many years, since we sang Christmas songs. And yet even after singing Christmas songs, I, I found that, you know, half the time we don't know the words. Am I right? Hey, but we, we, we know how to get there. Am I right? And so I said, well, I'll pick two that we could sing that they probably would know. I don't know that we know it and we're going to sing them and we're going to move. I believe that in the season that we're in, this song is appropriate joy to the world. The Lord has come. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know about none of that. We're going to sing the way we know it. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I'm going to be like the old people when we used to outline a hymn. <laughs> Can somebody give us a suitable air? <laughs> we 
we're just getting ready to sing. We're going to sing it. And at home, help us out. And so if we hit a flat note, and we don't know all the words, and if we mess up, just, just count it to the good. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> huh? But I want all of us to try to sing, and I'm not going to try to spit the words out, because I, I don't know them that fast, but let's go with joy to the world. Let's go ahead and let's not waste any more time, right? Come on, y'all going to help me out? Yes, sir. Y'all got to stand and help me out. Y'all got to. Yes. You got to be able to stretch so that you can pull it out. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven. Give yourself a hand. C minus, C minus, but give yourselves a hand. It's a C minus, but give yourselves a hand. <laughs> you may be seated. You may be seated. <laughs> Y'all make me scared to go to the next song. <laughs> Like y'all, y'all tone deaf or something. A Christmas story, and I want to give what the Holy Spirit gave to me. So please listen to me, and it, it, it does not matter. Don't don't ride over into your feelings because what I'm giving you is spiritually conceived. How many of you know that we all go through a silent period in our lives? When we want to hear from God, but we hear nothing. And we try to attribute everything to perhaps I did this or perhaps I shouldn't have done that. When many times it's just God choosing to mature you. To let you know that you don't get an answer just because you asked for one. To let you know that I'm trying to mature you and develop patience in you. And the only way God can show himself to us right now is through his Holy Spirit. But in order for his Holy Spirit to come, Jesus had to come. Because Jesus is the representation, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit is the representation of who Jesus is on earth right now. I began to think about the theology of man and how we were taught certain things. Not biblically based, but just generationally transferred stories that we heard and we took them at face value because we didn't know any better. I come from a generation, a, a generation that, that, that we were brought up and we really thought when everything showed up around the tree that it was Santa Claus. We did not know any better because we were not taught any better. Y'all let me teach you. Y'all let me teach you. We were not taught any better because I'm not sure that they knew any better in that season. However, we know that when we start using subtle deceptions, they equate to a subtle lie. Santa Claus didn't leave it. <laughs> we wish he did. Our bank accounts would be all right. 
We, we, we wish Santa would purchase in everything, but, but, but he, 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 he does not, and he did not purchase everything. So we have a mindset and we have a culture that brought us up one way, but in the way that it brought us up, it seems like we missed the truth. So I posed a question before, because this is a Christmas story, and I need you to be able to teach your grandchildren, your children, your great-grandchildren, the truth. Why was Jesus born in a manger? Because the way we were taught that reason he was born in a manger was that there was no room in the inn. But they never told us why there was no room in the inn. There was no room in the inn because there had been an order from the ruling authority calling everyone to come and register or as we do, as we use now, enroll to account for their family. So everybody was in one place at one time because it was that time for everybody to come to that place. I'm teaching now. In other words, there was no room in the inn because other people were already up there to register their family. And Joseph, in obedience, he took his family up to register. He did not know that Mary was going to deliver them. Oh my goodness. But her time came. Read your Bible and study your Bible. And if I were to give you the most simplistic area, I would tell you to read Luke 1 and 2. Luke chapter 1 and 2. So, so that you can understand. But then you go over to Matthew and, and you can read it over there. Read everyone's account of it. But understand when you're talking about it, it was not because they were poor. We have taught poverty to be the acceptable standard for a believer. But Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Somebody say a Christmas story. Jesus is the reason for the season. I, I, I go with that. Now. I, I, I go with that. Am I right? And, and yet we have many, many even Christian many of you sitting out there, you would come back and you would not say it face to face to me. But amongst yourselves, you're talking and you're saying, yeah, but we don't even know if he was born on the 25th of December. You make an issue of debate out of something that's irrelevant. You better teach Pastor Davis. Uh, in other words, what are, you, what are we debating? I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know the date you were born? I'm going to tell you, if you're saying, yeah, you don't know it, you were told it. You have no internal reference point that that was your birthday. Somebody else had to bear witness of the fact that you came on that day. You don't argue, you don't debate, and now because of our age and there's a, a, a mandate that you register birth, it's easy to track them. But there was a time and a period when they didn't track birth. They were simply told, oh, it's quiet up in here now, y'all looking at me crazy. Because I'm trying to get somebody off of that argument or trying to argue with people about when he was born. The issue is not when he was born. The issue is he was born. A Christmas story. He was born and, and we, chose, we choose to celebrate it on the 25th of December. I was told I was born in November on a certain date. I can't bear witness to that except through somebody else's witness. I don't debate it because I receive it. Why is it so hard for us to receive December the 25th? Contending about a day that's foolhardy. Talking about a Christmas story now. Because anytime somebody want to enter into a debate, they already have a positional mindset. And they're trying to bring you into them. So I want to give you the Christmas story as the way that I saw it through the word. Is that all right? I began to look and, and, and I, I saw Isaiah saying something in Isaiah 9. He says, for unto us 
a child is born. Unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So Isaiah prophetically spoke the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then as Isaiah prophetically spoke, I looked over in the book of Matthew. And Matthew spoke something to this end in Matthew chapter 1. He said, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. <laughs> Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say a real Christmas story, a real Christmas story. Then I, then I jumped on board, I, I, I jumped on board, I, I wanted to see what Luke had to say, and then Luke began to talk to us, and, and, and Luke began in Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, he says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Somebody say a virgin. That's important. That's important there. That's, that's important there. It's important there. Somebody say again. Say virgin. Keep that in the back of your mind. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, What manner of salutation this should be? And the angel said unto him, Unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Ooh, that's a powerful statement there. And now she gets an order of instruction behind favor. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Ah, my goodness. Then verse 34 emphatically states, Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Somebody said virginity. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto you, unto you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, this holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Now the angel comes and he's telling us, Gabriel, somebody say Gabriel. The messenger angel. My goodness. Gabriel, the messenger angel, is telling her God's going to use you because he found favor with you. And he's going to do something through you that's, that's going to cause people to talk about you. Oh my goodness. Uh, oftentimes when God uses you, you will be talked about. Oftentimes when God chooses you, you're not the most likely candidate according to man for the base things of this world he chooses to you that's the lower things he he said I, I don't matter it doesn't matter to him because he knows what he deposited in you but Luke 1 and 36 says and behold our cousin Elizabeth she has also conceived a son in her old age and it's her six months but they called her barren y'all didn't hear that so here's Mary saying, how can this thing be? Gabriel saying, hold on a minute. Let me tell you something. You know your cousin Elizabeth. You know she old. 
You know, they wanted a child all their life. But I come to tell you, she already six months pregnant. Oh, my goodness. Oh, y'all hear me? He's saying, in other words, when God says something is so, it is so. I don't care how long you've been barren. But no, no, but don't, don't, don't go there yet, Pastor Dave. I feel like preaching right now. Oh, y'all hear me? I don't care how long it's been dry. I don't care how long you didn't birth what you thought you were going to birth. God said at the appointed time, my goodness, if you can remember this Christmas story, you can have whatsoever you say because he already showed you that with him nothing is impossible. Some of you have been barren in your prayers and you thought God had forgotten you. Oh, I feel like preaching. Why are you going there already, Pastor David? Because God wants you to know he loves you so much that he put his spirit on the inside of you so he can bring forth that favor out of you. And I want to tell somebody today that favor bursts. It bursts what you need. It bursts what's necessary. It bursts. It bursts the impossible. Favor with God will birth the impossible. Why are we sitting here arguing about a day when we ought to be saying, Lord, I thank you for the season of impossibilities. I thank you, God, that you called a day, God, when that which man could not believe came to pass. My goodness. I, I, I could go a lot of places there, but, but even with Elizabeth and her husband, he didn't believe what he had been praying for all his life. And he doubted the angel. And because he doubted the angel, he was rendered speechless until John was born. I, I don't, don't you start teaching Pastor David? A Christmas story, are you hearing me? Sometimes when you doubt him, you think you said something, but he really said you're talking loud and saying nothing because some of you have that Zach Zachariah spirit that you sitting there and you thought you were praying. You thought you were talking to God, but he read your heart and he knew you doubted him. Right there is a good place for you to say, Lord, I, I should have forgiven me for doubting your God. I doubted you in the middle of the battle. I doubted you in con conflict. I doubted you. But God, now I pause to give you a thanksgiving. I pause to praise your name. I pause to bless you. Because God told you anything he said he's going to do, he'll do it. I'm talking about a Christmas story. See, I'm not worried. I'm not the type that get caught up about what's under the tree. Because what's under the tree is temporal. And it's going to pass in a few days. And I don't care how much money you spend on it. At the end of the day, the appreciation for it is going to depreciate. But when you start looking at, oh my goodness, who came to give his life as a ransom for you. Who came that your soul should be set free. When you begin to think about that. You begin to appreciate it. And your appreciation drives you to a praise. Where your praise said Lord I thank you. I thank you God. For sending forth your son. I thank you God. That I know you wanted him born of a woman. But you sent that holy thing. To bring her to I'm just talking about. A Christmas. Oh, you're so worried about getting this, that, and the other for somebody in the natural that doesn't even have an appreciation for it that you forget to thank the one who's giving you life to be able to make the bill that you hope to pay back. That ought to tell God, thank you. All right, all right, let me finish out. I'll go back to Luke 1 and 36. Let me finish this out. And behold, our cousin Elizabeth, she, shall, she also has conceived a son in her old age. Six months with her, she was called barren. Luke 1 and 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. People pull that out, and in context, they want to apply it to everything. But they don't want to apply it to the test of patience. Oh, I just talked better than you heard. She was old. She had went through her life. And we know by their custom, 
when you're barren as a woman in their custom, they feel you're cursed. And they reject you. Oh, it's quiet up in here now. And, and so uh, Elizabeth had gone through some things. She'd gone through some mockery. She'd gone through some shame. We don't know the tears that she shed. We don't know that. And just like people don't know the tears that you shed, neither do they know your mockery. It is not about the tears that you shed so much today as it is do you recognize who came on earth to redeem you. To redeem you. He came for your redemption. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me. According to thy word, an angel departed from her. She said, Be it unto me. Mary knew she was going to have to face some things. You can sit here and be all deep spiritually. You can, you can sit here and think that, you know, if it was you, come on now. If you were Joseph, and even though Gabriel came and talked to Joseph, you would be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't that converted. See, y'all deep now. My job is to teach you the truth. And the truth is because you know a story in the Bible that you think you know the outcome, you forgot that your life is a story that you don't know the outcome until you walk it out. So you have to believe God while you're in the battle. And I believe that a Christmas story of this magnitude would help you. The world has no problem imitating the word. You notice around this time of year, and I'm not here to beat up anything, so tell you, neighbor, listen to Pastor Davis and eat it today. Tell them it may be bitter, but eat it. Listen to this and listen to it, the comparison here. The world knows how to employ biblical strategies and concepts. There's something around this time of year they call Secret Santa. Secret Santa. But well, all of us want a secret <laughs> Santa. You know we, boy, don't you know if something showed up out of nowhere? You don't care who it came from. You like, well, Lord, I thank you. Because God going to get the glory. Am I right? Now, the world concept called him a secret Santa. My goodness. But Matthew told us over in chapter 6, verse 1, that when we give alms, my goodness, uh, that we shouldn't do it to be seen of man. When we give alms, we shouldn't sound it like a horn or a trumpet. He said, when we give alms, we should not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. He says, when we bless one another, we should always be better than a secret Santa because we got to do it year round. See, Secret Santa works in December, but where is he at in February when you still need a Secret Santa? Where is he at in March, April, May, and June uh, when you need, uh, I'm not teaching good today. I'm going to need you to help me out there, son. Uh, and over, I'm not teaching good right now because, see, you, you're so busy because you, we want a Secret Santa. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. I wish I had real people. See, but I don't ask God for a Secret Santa. I said, Lord, my goodness, supply my need according to your riches and glory in, through, and by Christ Jesus. Because, God, you told me in your word you'll cause men to give into my bosom because I am a giver. My goodness, leave that alone. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. He's just talking. A Christmas story. Notice the concept again. There will be a tree. And it'll have a child's name on it. And it'll have the things that the child wants. And they'll call it pick an angel. And you'll go and you'll take one. And in the generosity of the season, you'll try to make it happen for somebody. But who's supplying for that angel in March? 
what's applying when school gets ready to start? I'm just talking about how the world has used concepts from the word and they're greater at doing while we're sitting here not even knowing the full meaning of why Jesus came. I need you to look at somebody smile down and tell them Jesus came that you might have life. But he wants you to have an abundant life. So Pastor Davis, you're telling us, no, a Christmas, I just gave you a basic Christmas story. I don't have anything. I got my shirt on. Y'all see this thing that they call Santa? I, I, hey, it is what it is. I'm a celebratory person. But I'm going to always celebrate Jesus first. How many of you know Jesus is the reason for the season? Yes, he is. Huh? That's what they say. He is. He's the reason. Am I right? One thing I can say <laughs> on that special day. He is. Huh? He's the reason. Am I right? I mean, Kurt Franklin helped us out. That, that song from 1995. Y'all yeah. always talking about we sang old school. <laughs> A song has life throughout generations. Yeah. One thing I can say yeah. on that special day, yeah. he is the reason. I know y'all know it. Yeah. I know y'all don't know it. <laughs> huh? I don't need material thing all I need is the love you bring holidays I came to say that Jesus is the only way Jesus is the reason for the season what y'all dragging for Y'all know the song, y'all sing it. Let's go to heels. yourselves a hand. Give yourself a hand. C minus. Give yourself a hand. Confidence will kill anything. Confidence will kill anything. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Being confident of this very thing. He that's begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
I took this time to go a different way in service because I wanted us to bless the Lord. I didn't want a form of godliness. I didn't want us going through a traditional service. I just wanted to bring you into some reality. I wanted to challenge you to go home and read your Bibles and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to be able so that you can relate to future generations and even those of that, that, that have come out of you so that you'll understand that the power of the Most High has to overtake all of us. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, what he said, marvel not. Come on, help me out. Marvel not. You must be born again. He's saying, in other words, the Holy Spirit has to come upon us too. We have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. And just like the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, my goodness, Mary the virgin, he comes upon us. Come on now. We are dirty. <laughs> Most of us are not virgins. Y'all don't like me right there. I got real quiet in the church. I, I, I'm going to say that again. Most of us are not virgins. But that's a quiet church now. Because y'all trying to, you know, like, like y'all entering into pure. Like y'all pure. Look at somebody telling you, you're not clean every whip. Don't play with it. Oh, it got quiet then. And yet God chose you to put his spirit in. That's what I wanted you to see. That, that, that Mary had something. She had something. It wasn't so much the purity of her virginity. It was the willingness of mine to be available for impartation. How many of you are willing for the spirit of God to overtake your life? Stop trying to. You're not going to win spiritually doing it naturally. More than not. You must be born again, given a tithe and offering. Born into sin that I may live again. Born into sin that I may. God, we thank you for your offerings, God. We thank you for the returning of your time. We thank you for rebuking the devour for our sake. Open windows of heaven. We thank you for blessing this house, God, for blessing your people, for blessing the givers and the sowers into this house, God. Kingdom builders, God. Restores of the breach, God. God, we thank you right now, God. Strengthen them, God. Let increase be their portion. Bless them, power, and strengthen them is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Why you love me so? Why you love me so? Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never
be able to lead us on that a little bit. A little, a little, give me a little something. We're going to keep reflecting on it. Doors that I did not see. Why? 
down, bury us. Hey. Enough to lift the ceiling, God. <laughs> they tried to box me in, God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall Meditate on God's love and His forgiveness. Come on, think about it. Mercy and favor. Why you love, you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. Our Lord, you heal my body, Lord. Heal my body, Lord. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. Lord, you kept my mind. Time. 
sometimes, hey. I gave up sometimes, hey. But you loved on oh, me, Lord, hey. You loved on oh, me, Lord, hey. You loved on oh, me, Lord. Why? you back together. You fell apart, but he loved you back together. It takes a delicate love, an enduring love, to deal with something broken. It's tedious. It's, it's meticulous to take something broken and put it back together. God, you love me. Love me back together, Lord. Oh, come on, give God a praise for His love. I'm in love with you, love God.
Brother Jay bring Riley up. <laughs> Look at that right there. Yeah. Bring on back on the back side with me so they can see on camera. Hold up so they can see. Tell them all little wave at them, Riley. Say hey. Tell them hey. Look at them right there. Say hey. <laughs> Sister Renee, Sister Renee, come up with me. Wave at them, Riley. I know you don't like being on camera, but come on up, slide on over a little bit, y'all. Make sure they see them, they good. Y'all see them, on they good. This is a special day, a special time. In the spirit of the morning, knowing who God is, we the men of the Chicano, want to bless their Wiley family. Here's a little something, it's not much. But it is $500. God bless you, Merry Christmas. God bless you, the Wiley family. God bless you, have a great day. This is Shekana. Thank you for joining us at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. We hope you are truly blessed by the message delivered on today and that you will join us next time in the Powerhouse. We are located at 1603 Fortune Avenue in Panama City, Florida, where Sunday services begin at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday morning prayer at 8 a.m. Connect with us on Facebook at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse or on YouTube at C-O-T. POH to stay up to date on ministry concerns, issues, and projects. Support the ministry from home via Cash App at dollar sign SGPHWELL or with Givelify at Shekinah Glory Ministries, Panama City, Florida. This is Shekinah, where faith is personified, hope is actualized, and love is exemplified. Welcome to the Powerhouse.